Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to see if we can extract the zip code from a multi-line address field in Excel. So I had this question a couple days ago in um, uh, YouTube comments from a previous uh, mail merge video, and they were asking about getting that zip code from a multi-line field. So this could definitely happen sometimes if you're getting your Excel data from some other database and perhaps the address field is one complete unit. However, it's probably going to be in your best interest to break that address up into the key parts if reasonable to do so. It could be tricky depending on how that data is structured with spaces and things like that. So I've made myself a little demo here with a few fake addresses and I used uh, three lines for each one. To throw a little uh, curveball at it, I did put uh, an extra four characters after one of the zip codes because the goal here is going to be to extract only the five digits of the primary zip. Now, if you were just doing a straight old mail merge, perhaps you can just use the multi-line address, no problem. But it's not unusual to want to be able to extract a key piece of information, especially if I wanted to sort these by zip code or something. Maybe they need to be distributed amongst different salespeople. Maybe we want to do a mailing only to a certain zip code and stuff like that. Now, I haven't successfully tried this yet, but I'm about to. Um, however, the first thing I might try to do is just flash fill, which is pretty darn nice. So with flash fill, you kind of write how you want you the, the the data you want extracted and see if Excel can figure it out for you. So I've got a zip code field off to the side and I'm going to go to my first address and just type in 33592, 33592. There we go. Let me go back to that cell, go to my data ribbon, and I'm just going to click flash fill and see if Excel can help me out. Unfortunately, it couldn't. It didn't, you know, it, it did well at other things, if all the addresses were in the same format, it probably would have been pretty pretty fine right there, and we would have called this job done. But since there is a little bit of a screw up here, with or not a screw up, but there's a little bit of deviation with that uh, four digit extension, not gonna work for us today. So flash fill is cool when it works. Okay, so let's do this a little bit more in manual. So again, I'm gonna pick on one of my dates here. I'll pick on the, um, one of my dates, one of my addresses, I'll pick on the first one, and I'm gonna use a combination of functions. Now, first thought might be, well, great equals right. So I can do a right function for the address, five characters, and that's gonna work well, but again, we're gonna have trouble when we get to those addresses that have that extra four letter. So just using the right function isn't gonna be very effective here. So what other common element can I use? Well, if all of my zip codes are following the date, that's got potential. That's, let me make this a little bit wider so when I start typing this function, it could look pretty messy, by the way. So um, I've got that spacing in there. So the problem is there's so many things to look at. I can't just look at the uppercase letters of the state. I need to look at the spaces themselves. Now, something that I can start to look at is these addresses only have one comma. So you wanna kind of find that key piece of information in the address that you can grab onto, that the function can grab onto. That comma is gonna come in pretty darn handy, especially if it looks like after every comma, there's a space, two characters, a space, and then the zip code that I want. So let's see, I could try something like this equals mid. Um, the text in question is going to be the full address, comma. Now my starting position, my starting position is going to be a find function. I'm going to find, in quotes, the comma within the address field. All right, now I'm going to just go with that closing parentheses, I'm closing off the find function, comma, and now the number of characters. We're just going to guess at this one first. We'll refine it in just a moment. And let's see, um, I'll say I want five characters, which is probably actually going to be what I end up using. Closing parentheses finishes my mid function. And, and now we can start to see what little mess we're getting into. All right, well, that's pretty good. I am finding the comma and I'm displaying some characters. I'm getting the comma, the space, the two letters, um, and then the space after that. So that's my five. So let me go back to that first function and see if I can't tweak this. Now, my starting position for the mid function is currently 
the comma. I'm finding that comma. But I want to start at the comma. I want to start after the comma. Let's look at one of my addresses. So I've got the space and then two letters, that's three, and then another space, that's four. So if I do a plus four right after that find, it gets me closer. It gets me closer for sure. But I think it's not quite accurate. I think I'm still getting that space in there. So maybe I need to go five after the comma because it's counting the comma as well. Now this is looking pretty good. Okay, so it looks like this is going to work out for me. Now, of course, big, big requirement here is that all of my addresses, even though they're multi-line, they're still structured in that same way consistently. Um, what could throw this off? Well, what if there was another comma in here somewhere? Um, what if one of these was a business name that had a comma in it? or maybe you had two people's addresses in there. So that could certainly make it a little bit more complicated. It's going to require another level of fix. However, what we've got here is a mid function. And one of the keys to this is we are starting in the middle of our big text string, and we're looking for that one thing. In this case, it was a comma. And then we want to start several character positions after that comma and then display five characters of that for our five character zip code. So hopefully this helps that um, one questioner. And um, yeah, so I'm using a mid and find function to extract the zip code from a multi-line address field. Once we've got that, then we can of course sort by zip code and create new uh, worksheets based on certain zip codes. All right, thanks for hanging out with me. Take care.